New Dimensions Ministries, 110 Afterwoods Boulevard, Jackson, Mississippi. We thank you for coming this morning to our service by social distance. We miss you guys. We would love to assemble ourselves together, but unfortunately, the enemy, the virus, have not been able us to do this. But the good news is, for all the sink is saying, God's word will stand. So we thank you for joining us this morning as we start off with our scripture, with Matthews chapter 6, verse 26. Matthews chapter 6, verse 26, or 20, let's start with the 25th verse. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, which you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold, the fowls, the birds of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither nor they gather into barns. Yet our heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which one of you, by taking thought, can add one more inch to your body? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not raised like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, but, take, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Brothers and sisters, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I thank God that I have a beautiful wife. I thank God that my body is healed. I thank God for the food he put on my table. I thank God of all the miraculous things that he's doing in our families. We have so much to be thankful for. But yet still, sometime in this flesh, we do get frustrated. We do get impatient. We would like for you to be here. It's sad that you're not. But God. Still, the devil cannot take away the word of God when all others sink and sing. It's frustrating. It's getting to me. What shall I do? And the Lord says, <laughs> take no thought for tomorrow. For the tomorrow will take care of yourself. But today, we're going to count it all joy through these trials and tribulations. Because when we do, God work it patiently. And he worked at experience, but most of all, he gave us hope. You see, we've been endured for night, but joy come in the morning. You know, I'm reminded that the late, great Charles Price Jones, the founder of the Church of Christ Holding the USA, was once in a dark place. But he locked himself up in a room and the Lord put a song on his heart that he would make the darkness light before thee. What is wrong, I'll make it right before thee. All the battles I will fight before thee and the high place I bring down. I know it's dark, but the light will come. And that's why in the name of Jesus is why 
he said that the word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And he said, the just shall live by faith. And it's impossible to please God without faith, but he who seek him, he will rewardly, diligently reward you. Faith come by him. And he and by the word of God. And how can you not hear without, the, without a preacher? So after the message and song that our sister Yvette Grove will bring to us, you will hear the word from our preacher, our pastor, Bishop Thomas M. Jenkins. Let your all-consuming fire fill this tabernacle, purify our heart. Surround us in this place, breathe new life within us, purify, purify our heart. Shower down, shower down, send your spirit, Lord, We need you to rain, rain on us, breathe on us, shower down, shower down. greet everybody this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we are here in Jackson Mississippi at New Dimensions International Fellowship of Hope Ministries located at 110 Altawoods Boulevard we thank all of you for joining us this morning and we come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Father God in the mighty name of Jesus Father, we thank you today for your word. God, we thank you for these that are watching. And Lord, we pray today for this world. God, there's a lot going on in the world, God, with the virus. A lot of, lot of ignorance and a lot of things going on, a lot of violence. But God, we are glad today that it doesn't matter what it looks like that you are firmly in control. And now, God, we ask today as we come forth with the word, we ask, God, that you would speak through us a rhema word, a word that will bring forth transformation. Because, God, of ourselves, we can't do it. But, God, we are leaning and depending on you this morning. We ask, so, oh God, now that you would bless our time together, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This morning, as we look at the world today, we need to understand that it is a spiritual drought. And certainly, we need God to reign upon our world today because the world is going through all kinds of things and the virus that's going left, right, uh, north and south, east and west, it seems like it has no limits. But I'm glad today that we serve a God who has all power in his hands and we want to bring a message of hope today. We want to encourage everybody today to know that God has not turned his back on us, especially if you love the Lord today. And I'm reminded of what 
prophet said in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning with verse 13. He said, if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I want you to understand today, we need rain today. We need a spiritual rain upon America. We need a spiritual rain upon our world today because of what has happened. And I believe today that God wants to get our attention. Solomon had been given the assignment to build the great temple of God. He was reminded and God said, if I shut up heaven, hallelujah, and there be no rain, I want you to know today that God has the prerogative to do whatever he wants to do. That my God is sovereign and he's in control. But I want to say to those of you today who know Jesus as your personal savior, I want you to look to him in this hour because no matter what it looks like, there is hope. And I realize there's a drought in the land today. You don't believe it when you look at the crime statistics all over America in every city. There is killing going on. There's murder. There is stealing going on. There's all kinds of terrible things going on every day. It seems like our cities are getting worse and worse by the day. Our nations are getting worse by the day. All kinds of crimes are being committed all over the world. There are people that are suffering even as I speak today. In some countries uh, they've been shut off and there's no food in the land and people are, are starving because there are no food. Uh, there are people that are dying because of sickness and diseases uh, all over the land. But I want you to know today that it's time for rain. God wants to rain on us today. God wants to rain upon America today. God wants to eliminate the spiritual drought. Oh yes, there is hope today. Don't give up because we serve a God who has all power in his hands. Oh, glory. Hallelujah today. He says, if my people, hallelujah, my people, those of you who name the name of Christ, it's time for you to search yourselves. One writer says, search me, O oh God and know my heart. I wonder today, what's in your heart today? Are you living the life that God has called you to live? There's so much fear going on right now. Why God is allowing things to happen. You have to understand that it doesn't matter what it looks like. My God is in control, but it's time for you to line your life up. We have a lot of people in the world who name the name of Christ, but they only name him with their lips. Their hearts are far from him. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up. It's time starting with the pulpits all over this land and, and all over this world. We have people stand behind the sacred desk every Sunday and every Wednesday, but their lives are not in alignment with the Word of God. 
Their lives are not a testimony to the community. They live what we call their raggedy lives. They live immoral lives, and people are, are looking to leaders uh, who won't live right. There's some people who have grown up in churches uh, where the leader has never lived right. Uh, preacher going with the ushers, uh, deacons uh, going with the others. Uh, it's time out uh, for playing church, y'all. It's time out uh, saying one thing and doing another. He said, if my people uh, and you are part of that because you accepted Christ one day as your personal Savior, you have to understand that God has called us to a standard uh, starting with leadership uh, in our nation and in our world. Everybody has a responsibility to live according to this word, not according to your opinion. You have to understand that adultery is still wrong. It's still wrong for you to lay with somebody else's wife, for you to lay with somebody else's husband. I don't care who's doing it. Adultery is wrong. Immorality is wrong. Fornication is wrong. It's wrong for you to have sex if you are not married. I know you may not like me today, but I want to tell you what it's going to take if God is going to send rain. God wants to send rain to America. He said, if my people that are called by my name, it doesn't matter who you are. I just dealt with the leaders, but the lay people in the pews have a responsibility to live right. We don't want to live right. We want the blessings of God. We want his presence. Like people get presents at Christmas. We want his presence, but we really don't want his presence. We don't want his divine presence. And God is saying to you today, if we want to see his presence, it's time to line up your life with him because the God that we serve, he has all power in his hands. Somebody need to say, let it rain. Let it rain. We're going through a spiritual drought. Everything seems to be drying up. The churches are drying up. Some of them may be filled to capacity on Sunday, having four and five services, but they are still dry. They have no power. When churches have power, that means we'll see people's lives changed, not folk that's going into a building. God is trying to get our attention. God is letting the world know, not just America, but he's not playing. People around the world are worshiping everything but the God who created the heaven and the earth. They are worshiping their God. But it's time for the church of Jesus Christ to rise up and be the light that God is calling us to be if my people, if my people call by my name, everybody is worried. Am I going to get the virus? Am I going to get this? But I want you to know that God has promised to protect his own. It doesn't matter what happened. God says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. But Solomon is crying out today, if my people, which are called by my name, hallelujah, would humble themselves. It's time for you to humble yourself before God. It's time for you to come down off of your mountain of sin. It's time for you to come down from your mountain of pride, your mound, your mountain of self-degradation. God said it's time now that we begin to humble ourselves before a mighty God and realize that it's in him we move and breathe and have our being. But the world today seemingly is not concerned about God. They're only concerned about having a good time. It's all about pleasure. There's nothing about, there's nothing wrong with pleasure as long as pleasure Pleasure comes out to God, and as long as it's godly pleasure. But the Bible says in Matthew 6:33, but seek ye first 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. God has gotten us in a point where some folk wouldn't go to church on Sunday morning preparing to watch the game. I'm an avid sports fan. I love basketball. I love football. I love baseball. I love all of the sports, but none of those sports come before my God. But now look at what has happened. They've shut all the sports down. They've shut everything down. I believe that God is trying to get our attention. I believe that God is trying to get us back to him in the old days when there were no televisions and all of these things were not happening. People would go to church and they wouldn't just come to church, but they would be the church in their neighborhoods. They would be the church on their jobs. But God says, I have a plan. I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to shut it down. I I believe today uh, that if you look to God, uh, God will hear and answer your prayer. You don't have to be afraid. Uh, I'm not afraid today uh, because I know uh, who my God is. I know uh, that my God is in control. Uh, my prayers are for those who are sick. Uh, my prayers are for those who are suffering. Uh, some were already suffering before this crisis uh, on the way to church. Uh, saw a young man sleeping uh, outside. Uh, probably had slept there all night because it didn't have nowhere to sleep. Our world is getting more and more homeless like never before. Never have we seen the homeless population rise like it's rising. That's why we have a shelter. That's why for years we believed that God has called us to reach out to the least of these people in prison. Nobody care about what's going on. That's why we have teams that go to the prison and pray for those in the prison. God is calling the church to stop being so lazy and stop doing your own thing. A lot of folk don't have time. You let big games come up. They don't have time. They've already got the barbecue going. Already got everything going. You're going to church today. Oh, no, man. I got to get the barbecue ready for the folk coming over to my house. But look what my God has done. God has shut it down. He has shut it down. I want you to understand God is a jealous God. And anything you put ahead of him, he will shut it down. America and the world needs to wake up. God says, I'm shutting it down. I sent my son to die for your sins. I heard uh, Dr. Laurie say uh, we've come too far. You have to understand we've come too far. We bled too long. Uh, we've suffered too much uh, to turn around now. God has sent his only son to die for our sins. And it's time that we turn to God. It's time that we recognize the son who got up on the third day for my sins and your sins. I promise you, if everybody would turn to God, if everybody would repent and say, God, I've been putting games before you. I've been putting everything before you. Hallelujah, somebody. I want you to understand, I'm a sports fan. I love football. I love my alma mater. I love it. But I don't put anything ahead of God. Now you go to a big game. The game starts at 2 o'clock. Stadium full at 11 o'clock. You go to church. Church services start at 11 o'clock. Hallelujah. And one o'clock, folk are still coming in, getting in late. But don't care if it's a game. They get there two or three hours early. God wants to build some new urgency in your heart for him. God wants you to understand that there is a drought. There is a spiritual drought. People are not talking about God. People are not living for God. We live in a world seemingly like we've never lived before. 
I never thought I would dream of the day when 12-year-olds would be tried for capital murder. I never thought I'd live in a day when 16-year-olds would be tried for assault and battery. I never thought I'd live in a world where kids are doing crimes. It's because mom and dads have been too busy to train them up in the way that they should go. We don't want to tell the truth, but I'm going to tell the truth. I didn't come today to make folk happy. I want us to get out of this crisis. I want God to send rain. I believe that if we line our lives up, we shouldn't just wait until the day to start calling prayer. We have prayer every day. Hallelujah. Our church gathers for prayer through our prayer line every single day. You see, if you pray ahead of the storm, God will take care of you. God wants us to get a life of prayer every morning, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, 5 a.m. on the prayer line, calling out to God. Been doing it for many years because we understand the power of prayer. I believe today that people now are going to begin to move toward real prayer, not just these prayers so everybody will know you praying, not these prayers for show, sure, but the prayers that you pray when you are behind your house praying, the prayer that you pray when nobody else sees you. God is calling us today to a new level of prayer. God wants to get your attention. And so he says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. I want you to seek the face of God. I declare today, if we begin to seek God like we've never sought him before, I promise you this virus would fall in line because my God has all power in his hands. It's not by accident that things are happening the way they are. Sometimes people and nations get arrogant and think that we can handle it. Uh, look, America's leading the nation now in the number of people at the virus. Uh, God is speaking to America. He's saying, America, you are a great nation, but America, on my money, on your money, you put in God, you trust. But your laws say that you trust in money. Your laws say you trust in in the rich. Your laws say that you don't care about immorality. God says it's time for America to get back to God. And I promise you today, if we get back to God, we're going to see the miraculous happen. Everybody's going to be talking about, look what God has done. Look what the God that we serve has done. I thank God for the government, but God has called the government to be on the shoulders of the church. He said on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's time for you to line your life up because things are seemingly are getting worse and worse. But I want you to know those of you who love God, you follow the laws of the land. Do what they tell you to do. And I promise you, you follow this book and the Lord, and the Lord will take care of you. Just don't give up. I want to tell you, and I'm on my way out of here. I want you to know today that it's about to rain for those who love God. You may not understand it today, but I promise you there is hope. Hope is on the way. The word of the Lord came to the prophet, and he said it's going to rain. It's going to rain. So he told his prophet to get up the mountaintop, and the prophet start going up there. He didn't see nothing the first time. Uh, prophet said, go on back up there. He went up the second and third and fourth time. Uh, said, keep on going. Uh, and about the seventh time he got up there, he saw a cloud uh, about the size uh, of a man's hand. It doesn't take much uh, for God to do something. Uh, and prophet said, I hear the sound uh, of abundance of rain. Uh, I want you to know today that in spite of what's going on, I hear 
the sound of abundance of rain. I hear churches are beginning to pray to God. I hear folk are turning their hearts to Jesus because mom is in ICU, dad is in ICU, sisters in ICU. The doctors say I can't do nothing for, but I hear the sound of abundance of healing. God is about to do a great work. Uh, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. As long as my God is on the throne, it's going to work out. I tell you today, it's about the rain. It's about the rain like never before. I understand the present reality, but I know what the outcome is going to be. I realize at the end of the day, my God is going to win. Can you ever tell me a war that he ever lost? Can you ever tell me a battle that he ever lost? Can you ever tell me that anything he ever lost? My God and those who follow him, if God be for you, who can be against you? Don't worry today, don't worry today. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. It's about the rain on this drought field land, this drought sinful land. God is about to send rain. Our prayers are going to be heard. Your children are going to come to know Jesus. Your husband is going to come to know Jesus. Your siblings are going to come to know Jesus because people are crying out like they never cried out before. Folk trying to find vaccine. But I want to tell you there is a vaccine that will heal all this stuff. It's called the blood of Jesus. Jesus, the blood that he shed way back on Calvary. That blood will heal today. My word says by his stripes we are healed today. May God bless you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, those today who don't know Jesus, you may be watching, you may be listening. And you got fear in your heart. The Bible says perfect love cast out fear. And so today in the name of Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know him, the Bible says confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God is raising from the grave. Thou shalt be saved. I want you to know that you can accept him right now by simply saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. And from this day forth, I will live for you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've repeated that prayer today, you will saved it right as we speak. Elder Thick Pen is gonna come now and close us out. Again, I wanna thank you. This has been Bishop Thomas M. Jenkins coming to you from Alta Woods Boulevard, Jackson, Mississippi. Elder Thick Pen, would you come now? I thank God for all of you. May God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bishop, what a wonderful message. Oh, hallelujah. Stir them up, Lord. Stir them up. We thank God for today. We thank God that the word has gone forward. Hallelujah. We don't have to worry about announcement today. Sister Cartessa, she'll have it on, on our uh, group me or get it out to us the message that will be for the week but I would like that same sister sister Cartessa we thank her that we are going we are on zoom where she gives the Sunday school some people say Sunday school we say discipleship class where she's giving the discipleship class every Sunday hallelujah at 8 30 if you don't know how to get into Zoom or to Zoom in to her, you can contact her or contact any of us where we can get in touch with her so that you will be in for a wonderful treat in our discipleship class. Also, we want to thank our prayer warriors, Elder Henry Jenkins and Elder Robinson and all the prayer warriors that come on every Sunday on the conference call at 7 30 in the morning. We want to thank them as they lead the way. A lot of things you don't see, 
but God is moving in a mighty way here at New Dimensions Ministry and in your life. So we want to remember about the call. Amen. And do not forget that the message will go forth on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. We will see you then. So once again, <laughs> being reminded of our sister Costessa, as she would say, Go in peace and have a fantastic week. God bless you. And you need to be saved today. God and you are discouraged. But I want to tell you today, you can God accept pray. Jesus right now. God you can accept Jesus right now by simply Lord. saying, Lord by Jesus, forgive me of, of all of my Thank sins. You. And from this day forth, I will, I'll live for you. Let us pray. Oh, that song is dear to my heart. You read?
But as you're standing this morning, I want you to think about the blessings that you have today, the greatest gift that all of us have today is a new day of life. Look at yourself. You can hear yourself talking. You can move around. Look at you. Oftentimes, we forget about the greatest gift that we have. And every day that God gives us a new day of life. There were many who laid down last night. They didn't get up this morning. And so we want to thank God that he's blessed us to be here today and to be alive and to know that we are alive. And so we just give him some honor. We give him some praise this morning. Thanking God for one more day. Every day is precious. Every single day is precious that the Lord gives us breath to breathe. The many who lay down last night with every anticipation of getting up this morning, but they slipped away on the other side during the night. And I just wanted to remind us, sometimes when we come in the presence of the Lord, we are not as excited as we ought to be because oftentimes we're looking at our circumstances. But the fact that you are living, the fact that your heart is beating this morning, there are many who were lying in ICU. I have to make a trip to ICU today to make some visits. Those people may or may not get out of ICU. Amen? And, and, and so we need to have a spirit of gratitude. Give thanks with a grateful heart that God has blessed us to be here this morning, I am grateful. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful that God has blessed me to be here one more day, one more day, one more day, one more day. And as we come to the close of this year, we, we celebrate We'll continue our celebration on next Sunday, and we have every expectation in the world of being here on the last Sunday. Amen? We trust and we're believing that we're going to see the last Sunday. We're going to keep on celebrating. And you know, somebody came in here this morning with a bad headache. Amen? But I'm going to tell you right now, God is going to touch that headache right now. Amen? There's healing in this place right now so that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask according to the power that works where? In us. In us. And so I wanted to remind you this morning so a lot of times people get into so much materialistic thinking. When I was, when we were rearing our children, we didn't wait until December to give them a lot of gifts. They would get bicycles in July if that was good behavior. They may get dolls in April if that was good grades. Amen. Throughout the year, we celebrated Christmas. Amen? How many of you, see, a lot of times people don't get it. We have to celebrate all the time. And this December 25th is almost like a culmination of this year. But I want you to start next year. And don't, 
Don't wait until December to start celebrating. You need to celebrate. Amen? There's some folk that celebrate their birthday the whole month. Amen? I, I hadn't moved to that level yet. Amen? I, I hadn't moved to that level yet. I, you know, I, I'm just thankful to, to make it for another birthday. Amen? And certainly if you can celebrate your birthday for a whole month, we can celebrate his birthday for the entire year. That's what we've done in our household for 40 years. Amen? We've celebrated Christmas every month. Amen? And that way children grow up with the right value system. Amen? They grow up with the right value system, and God wants you to have the right value system. Amen? I'm going to take off and preach in just a moment. Amen? But I'm clearing the runway this morning. Amen? The plane has to take off. And sometimes before it leaves the tarmac, the pilot comes on and says, hold up. We got to wait just a moment. The air traffic controller has told me to wait for a moment, and he's going to give me a time that we can back up and take off. Hello, somebody. In just a moment, I'm going to get the signal from the air traffic controller. Glory be to God. And we're going to be in flight in just a moment. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. We want to clear this runway this morning because this is going to be the greatest Sunday that you've ever experienced. Hello, somebody. God is going to remove some burdens today. God is going to do some healing today. God is going to do some deliverance today. Come on, somebody. Oh, we give thanks this morning. Don't worry about what happened yesterday. Don't worry about what happened last week. Today is a day of celebration. Come on, somebody. Today is a day of celebration. We're going to celebrate publicly the birth of our Lord, but we do it every single day with our lifestyles. Father, in the name of Jesus, Oh, God, we thank you today for all that you've done. And God, we give you glory today because you are an awesome, awesome God. Father, we thank you for blessing us across this past week. God, that you brought us through many things, but some have almost experienced accidents. Others have seen some sickness. Others have seen some other difficulties. But God, at the end of the day, you brought them through. And God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for one more day. God, we are thankful. Many, many years ago, you sent your son. You sent him to die for our sins. And today, Father, we give you glory and we give you honor. We thank you, God, for saving our households, our entire household. God, we thank you today for saving our children. God, we thank you that you kept our city last night. Father, we thank you that no churches were bombed, God. We're thankful, God, for who you are. We give you glory. We give you honor today for one more day. Father, come on and praise him like you've never praised him before. God has given you one more day. Oh, hallelujah. In this place today, we need some real crazy praises today. We need some folk that's going to praise God like never before. Matthew the one in verse 21 says, and she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are thankful today, a promise kept. Somebody say, a promise kept. God always keeps his promise. The originality of this promise goes back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. The first messianic promise 
concerning the birth of Jesus is found in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. You know, the Lord knows how to shine light in a dark place. The Lord how, knows how to bring joy when there is no joy. We know what had happened in Genesis chapter 3. First of all, chapter 1 and 2, Adam and Eve came on the scene and God made this great creation and he gave them orders of what to do and what not to do and don't eat off this tree. And of course, they did eat off the tree. Amen. They disobeyed God and, and that's where we see <laughs> glory be to God because of their disobedient. Adam and Eve went out and got some tailor-made suits out of fig leaves. Hello, somebody. Glory be to God to hide their nakedness. And the Bible says that God waited until the cool of the evening to come down to the garden. As we begin to see the grace of God begin to unfold uh, way back in the beginning, I'm so glad today that God has always been a righteous God, that God has always been a loving God because he didn't have to wait until the cool of the evening. Uh, he could have just went down there and destroyed them and said, I told you not to eat off the tree, and so I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy you, but my God is a God of love. How many of you know today that God is a God of love? Somebody say a promise kept. Hello, somebody. A promise kept. Uh, he didn't go down and, and do it that way. He came down and, and one of the things he did, he clothed them. I'm so glad that he clothed them uh, and he did all of these things and, and then he put them out of the garden and told them that they had to work. But as he, after he put them out, he promised us a Savior. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, I won't go there today because I don't want to be too long with you, but somebody say, a promise kept. Amen. And, and, and so he, pr he promised them the Savior. And then starting in the book of Genesis, uh, throughout the Bible, we begin to see the unfolding of this promise. God had a plan to save mankind. He loved us so much. Uh, in spite of ourselves, in spite of our mistakes, uh, and even our imperfections today, God never stops loving us. How many of you know that God still loves you? You may have done some bad things. You may have done some terrible things, but God never stopped loving you. Say, God has never stopped loving me. Come on and say it. God has never stopped loving me. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Somebody say a promise kept. Hello, somebody. A promise kept. How many times have people promised you something uh, and they didn't come through? They told you, I'm going to do it, but they did not do it. But I'm so glad today that God did not forget about his promise. Uh, he unfolded his promise uh, through his plan. And then as we move on through the book of Genesis, uh, man got terrible. And then a man by the name of Noah came on the scene. Hello. And God said, look at here. I want you to build an ark uh, for the saving of the people because the world has gotten so bad. And, and I want you to build this ark because you're going to need it. It's going to rain after a while. Somebody say, it's going to rain after a while. <laughs> Oh, glory, hallelujah. And you see, when we think about Moses, uh, Noah building this ark, uh, the ark represents safety. It represents salvation. And so we begin to see the unfolding of this salvation. Uh, I got to speed on. Uh, Ma Noah finally finished the ark, uh, and he told the people, the whole while he was building the ark, this is going to rain. You all need to get saved and come on in. But they didn't listen to him. They didn't listen to him. Uh, only his family, a total of eight people, somebody say eight, 
Glory be to God. Eight represents a new beginning. A new beginning. Hallelujah. And so the story goes on that, that it started to rain. And it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. You're listening to the smooth gospel sounds of Jay Walden and Company off of his debut CD entitled With the Heart of Praise. Available at CDBaby.com and local African import retail stores in and around Houston. Jay Walden and Company has hit songs like Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Just a little talk with, with the Jesus. Heart of Praise. And He will make a way. I'm John Walden of J. Walden and Company. If you need to be encouraged, inspired, or if you want to have intimate worship, you can have it with my new CD, With the Heart of Praise. Hi, I'm Apostle Tommy Bell. I'm First Lady Tabitha Bell. And this is Touching the World Ministries. Our service times are Sunday morning, 8.30, we have Sunday school. 9.30, we have worship service. At 5 p.m., we have our evening service. On Tuesday nights, we have our Transformation Tuesday at 7 p.m. And on Thursday nights, we have intercessory prayer at 6 p.m. Come join us and be blessed. Word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Want everybody that can and will.